Today we're going to talk about bubblegum flavor, what it is, and why you need to know about it. Now the why you need to know about it part is because it's mostly esters, so it's about 80% in this formula. It's really simple, you can't screw it up, and if you're just getting into flavor development, this is a great formula to work with because it comes out with very distinct results. It tastes like bubblegum. And then you can modify it and play around with it. And all of the ingredients are really readily available to anybody. And again, if you're getting into flavor development, this will help you learn about esters. And if you haven't watched my previous video on esters, that will fill in some of the gaps as well. But esters do have a benefit of being, you know, soluble, and they also are very distinct. Back in the 1850s and 1860s, when they first started isolating esters via distillation, they formulated almost every fruit flavor or essence back then using esters as, you know, there's probably about 20 of them and they made up all of the fruit flavors at the time. Now we have many more ingredients to work with, but this one is a great base to get started as I mentioned. Now what is bubblegum flavor? Well, it's mostly fruit, so you know, pineapple and banana and strawberry make up most of it. Pear elements come into it as well. And then you have vanilla, wintergreen, cinnamon, and clove, and the rest esters. So it's 80% esters in the total mass, and then 20% other, which are used in very small amounts compared to the esters. And then the rest is just propylene glycol and a little bit of triethyl citrate to round it out. And what you end up with is a bubblegum flavor. And now you can use this flavor to make a soda or a martini or just to play around with. If you don't like bubblegum flavor, that's fine. This is still a great formula to learn from, so that's why we're doing it. And again, it will fill in the gaps in how you work with esters, and then you can keep developing this as you see fit. And one example of this is that this formula actually stems from Tutti Frutti, which was a gum back in the 1880s, and then a couple additions turned it into bubblegum. And then if you take Tutti Frutti and add uh, benzaldehyde, which is that cherry almond flavor, you know, almond extract flavor, you actually get fruit punch. So it's this idea that everything starts from something and then you just build upon it. And that's one of the things I really want to teach you when you get into formulating stuff is that you start with a base formula and then you can add to it and create unique things like fruit punch. Now this recipe comes from Lavatorium, it's actually a perfume recipe or a perfume base formula. And all of the ingredients in it are grass, so generally recognized as safe and food approved. So let me show you how to assemble this. It's quite easy. And our first starting ingredient is ethyl butyrate. And this is pineapple aroma. This is the kind of the core ingredient. If you ever bought like a pineapple soda or any pineapple artificial flavor, Ethyl butyrate is that core flavor. Next, we're gonna need some ethyl acetate. Now this is a really light ester. It's kind of got an ethereal aroma to it and uh, it adds definitely lift to it. So we're gonna need 1.5 grams of this. Now you can go over or under, I choose under today on that one. But again, if you're off by 0 0.01 grams, it's not going to be a major deal breaker. Now the next thing we need is isoamyl acetate, and this is banana. This is the core kind of artificial banana flavor. So if you've ever had those little yellow banana candies, this is that flavor. And we need 1.5 grams of it. Next is ethyl propionate, and this is another light ester. Uh, tends to have a little bit of a rummy flavor, but mostly fruity. And we're going to need 1.2 grams of this. Next is amyl butyrate, and this is just kind of a fruity ester. Does have kind of characteristics of the banana and the pineapple. So we are going to need one gram of amyl butyrate.
And that is it for the esters. Now, now we're gonna need one gram of vanillin or vanillin. And I've just pre-weighed that out because I prefer using these weigh boats as opposed to weighing powders into this because you can often shake too much powder into it. So weigh boats and these little anti-static ones are great. And you can just kind of tap that all in and it will go in. Now we need some aldehyde C16. This is a strawberry flavor and it is quite you know, common in the industry, easily available. All of these ingredients are quite readily available. So 0.6 grams. Next we need wintergreen and we're gonna, this is a root beer flavor, though it has kind of a minty element. And this is the key ingredient for bubble gum. Uh, without this, it doesn't really have, it, it, it's close, but this really brings that bubble gum-esque flavor to the front. So we only need 0.2 grams of this. Next, you can use clove oil, but I use methyl isoeugenol. This eugenol is kind of the uh, core ingredient of clove oil. So I just use this because it mixes better. Uh, it doesn't have any of the additional compounds. So, uh, but you can use clove oil and we only need 0.1 gram of this. So just a few drops. And the last ingredient flavor wise is Cinnamic aldehyde. Now this is the core ingredient in cinnamon. It's what kind of gives the heat of cinnamon and that true kind of cinnamon flavor. So this is gonna add a little punch to it, but we only need 0.1 grams. So just a few drops. And I don't mind going over on this one just cause it does kind of add that punchiness to it. And that is basically it for flavor compounds. Now, I do add a little triethyl citrate. This just gets the total up to about 10 grams. So we're making a 10 gram formula. And I'm gonna add 0.6 grams. Normally, if you're doing this, you'd list all your weights as you weigh them out and then add them up and then just make up the 10 grams if you don't hit 10 grams with a little bit of this. So I didn't do any of the weighing just my formula has it at 0.6 grams, so. And it really doesn't add anything to the flavor. And now we're just gonna add 40 grams of propylene glycol, and this should make it a roughly a 50 gram formula. And that is it, that's your bubble gum flavor. So you just wanna put it on a stir plate and stir until everything's dissolved. And it will take a while, a little heat will help that if uh, the solvents are cold like it is in here, but you just heat it up a little bit with a little warm water, just dip it in the warm water and then it'll heat up and it'll dissolve quicker. But if you leave it on a stir plate for about 20 minutes, it will dissolve. And then you just put it in a bottle and you have your bubble gum flavor. Now, why don't we try this out in a basic taster? And I've done a video on the basic taster, which is what will allow you to kind of estimate what it's going to taste like. And if you don't know how to do that, just do check out that video, I'll link it below because it's a really easy way to prototype flavors. And we just need a beaker. And for basic tasters, we don't need to be super accurate. We're just gonna add 100 mils to this beaker, roughly. Put that on there and we're gonna get a magnetic stir. Now that we have our basic taster, and a basic taster is just a 10% sugar solution. You can add a little acid afterwards, but it, go check out that video, it explains it all. And the simple way to do this is just to add two drops. You let this stir for a minute and then you'll be able to taste it and understand what the flavor is like. And you can do this multiple times to try to get a flavor that you like. So you can increase the wintergreen or decrease some of the esters, but it is a really good 
prototyping learning formula. Uh, I'll let that stir for a minute and then we'll give it a taste. Now, simple way to taste it is just to take a sample. And yep, that's bubble gum. That is just kind of that fruity, you know, nebulous flavor that you really can't identify, but we all know it from double bubble or any of the other bubble gums we've had over time. That's the flavor. And wintergreen does contribute a lot to that. So if you were to play around with different ingredients, I would try playing with the, the wintergreen, either increasing it or decrease. Well, increasing it, I would recommend. But it's all up to you to try. Now, how would you use this? You can make a soda with it using any of the techniques I've shown you, or you can just drop it into, for example, a vodka martini to make a you know, bubblegum martini. The one thing with alcoholic beverages, you usually need a lot more flavor. Even in the uh, Flavor Extracts Manufacturers Association documents, you'll always see that flavor compounds in alcoholic beverages are always higher than those in non-alcoholic beverages. So take that into account. So you may need four or five drops in a martini, maybe more. But again, it's always up to you to taste things and try things. You're not gonna hurt anybody by using a little bit more. But if you use too much, you will get that off flavor that I've talked about in multiple videos. But it is up to you to try and experiment. And once you get something that you like, whether it's alcoholic or non-alcoholic, then you can use it for whatever you want. You can try dropping a drop of this into something like a mojito and seeing if it changes the flavor. So if you're getting a little bit bored of a classic mojito and just want to add some fruitiness to it, maybe this will work. Maybe leave out the winter green and you'll end up with something back historically. There was this thing called universal basic ether and it was just kind of a, a combination of fruity esters and maybe a few other compounds. And it was just a simple solution of esters to kind of punch up the flavor in different beverages. So you can use it just literally keep it behind the bar like bitters and then dose them into drinks and see how it works out. Again, the esters are going to give you a fruity side, you know, the winter green, the cinnamon, the vanilla, and the uh, clove oil are going to modify that. This is, uh, again, why I think this is a great formula is that esters tend to be fruity. So you, people try them, they'll be reminiscent of fruit. The moment you add, start adding these other compounds changes the whole dynamic of it and turns it into something completely different. So as I mentioned earlier on, benzaldehyde will punch this into something different, like a fruit punch. Uh, but it's all up for you to play with. And again, all of these ingredients are really simple. So basically that's it for this video. If you want the original formula, you can go over to Laboratorium and they do have some other formulas, but you always have to check to make sure all the ingredients are usable for food. Uh, this just happens to be one of the cases where it is. It is called Tutti Frutti. Uh, that is what originally this flavor was, and then the addition of wintergreen turned it into bubblegum. Simple modifications can really change a flavor, so if you're into the formula development and you've made it this far, this is what I want you to do. Take some oddball ingredient or punchy ingredient and change things, and then you'll end up with your own unique formulas that you can either just use behind the bar, entertain people at home, or commercialize a product. Again, and if you're a Patreon and you've made it this far, thanks for being a Patreon. The support really helps. I'll do some write-up over there for you. And again, thanks everybody for watching the channel. You know, like, subscribe. I don't say that much, but do so. And I'll see you in the next video.